Welcome to Real Talk Live. For those of us who are joining us Thursday at four o'clock, today is May 21st. And things continually change under our feet and our job at the Mahal and Ross Group is to bring you all the information you need so that you can make the best decisions for your family. So I'd like to introduce myself, I'm Aura Ross. We've got Jordan Rosenswag on the call with us. We have Lauren Rhodes, we have Jack Ross, and Davis Mulholland, and we are the Mulholland and Ross group. Well, we have Peter too, but he's just not on this call. Okay, so we did get a couple of questions through the week that um, we want to jump into today, and we want to give you a really good sense today about what the buyers are really talking about out there today on the road as we take them through homes, as we show them homes, as we're doing the virtual open houses, what are the conversations? And just as people are sort of logging in, I'm gonna, just going to show you my, uh, my screen and just share with you one of the graphs we've been looking at as a team this week. Sorry about that. Because um, as much as we want to watch the average prices right across the city of Toronto, and we are talking about the city of Toronto 416 area code here. Um, these are the detached homes. There's your average price. So again, I know the news is talking about prices going down, but look at how much we went up. So quite steady, guys. This is a fairly steady thing, right? And, and I know uh, the agents on the team, myself as well, we're not feeling those prices really pull, pull down too much. We're going to get into that. However, this is what's interesting, right? This is the number of units. So that's where we're feeling there was that 60% drop in sales in April over uh, April of 19, which would have been over here, see? And I'm talking units, not price. Price, we only dropped a little bit, right? And it's the same pattern with our condo market. Again, prices dropped, but keep in mind, were we not going crazy earlier this year with our condo market? Like it was nuts. Yeah. So we're back to kind of normal, right? But this is, this is pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. That still continues to amaze me. Yeah. And I know we had some interesting ideas as a team, as far as what might be pulling those numbers down. Um, especially in the condo market, right? Jack, did you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, obviously the news has done a pretty good job of pointing out what's been happening in the condo market. You know, there's some spots downtown in the CO1. They say condos prices have fallen in some places, but 60,000 to $85,000 in prices or sorry, in, in price so far. So that's kind of interesting, but I think one of the big drivers behind this, obviously we're in a pandemic here, but um, a lot of these condos were entry level, right? Like for your first time home buyer, this was the affordable range and this was the affordable option for them. And, and a lot of those first time home buyers tend to be younger. A lot of them tend to have not have a lot of seniority in their job. Maybe they've only just recently started it and got their pre-approval. So, you know, they, I feel like they were very exposed to this. And yeah. so there's definitely um, some of those first time home buyers that have pulled back out of the market or no longer qualify um, for their purchase. And so supply and demand, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of the first time buyers um, that we saw gearing up to go into the market for all the reasons you just said, right? Job security, all of that. And perhaps some of the money that family had offered to gift through refinancing their own home shifted because we saw mortgage and lending regulations change for those people who wanted to use their primary residence in a means to do some other things with that money. And so we saw only, lots of changes. Yeah. And not only, I just want to jump on that because I was thinking about something the other day was, you know, a lot of these banks are no longer allowing you to buy an investment property with a home equity line of credit. And, and these, we all know buying a condo was like a condo investment was like the thing to do in, in Canada. Right. So yeah. um, that's definitely taken the wind out of a few people's sales. Well, I know a lot of people my age were buying that condo thinking I'll buy it now, rent it for a few years, but my full intention is that is going to be my downsizing in a few years. But after watching the condos go up 10% a year, 
um, I didn't, you know, a lot of people thought I had to buy my condo now and I'll sell my house later, but I can't afford to not buy that condo. So many things, right? So many different things affecting um, this market and our, and our detached market for certain. And I know today myself, just having conversations with home sellers that would like to sell. And I'll tell you, it's not always about price because some people who bought their home 50 years ago are pretty pleased with today's prices still. It's a, it's still, it still comes down to a question of lifestyle and it's a still, a, because it's always a big change. And it's a question of uh, being comfortable in today's climate with the pandemic and, you know, being safe and comfortable under those circumstances. So. Yeah, absolutely. So on that one, I thought um, we got a couple questions from last week. So let me just pull one up. Hmm. You guys enjoying a beautiful day? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were at the park today. Social. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just but, had to get yeah. some fresh air today. I'm sorry. Like everyone yeah. had to. Um, okay. So Jack, we'll start with you because I know you've been out showing a couple of different uh, families, uh, buyers looking for homes. We've got people looking luxury. You've got a couple of investors you've got a couple of others on the go looking for different things. What would you say is the, if you had to generalize a mood out there from the buyers, what are you feeling? What, what's going on? Um, it's a good question. Motivation. So the buyers that are out now that are, you know, risking going into houses or, or are um, putting offers in, those are motivated buyers. Anybody that wasn't super motivated is kind of taking a back seat to this because they're, they're either waiting or their situation has changed. We're seeing that if, if someone's serious, they're really picking just a couple of houses. Uh, they're doing everything virtually. They're narrowing it down to maybe one or two houses. They're seeing those houses and they're putting offers in. So the right. tire kickers are out of the game. Right. And Jordan, you had some uh, condo showings last week where you started with eight virtually, I think, right? Yeah, we started, uh, we did eight virtual showings from the East End all the way to the West End and got through them in an hour and a half because it was all virtual and narrowed it down to the two that they really liked and then physically went and saw the two. Uh, and it definitely is a, is a time saver for, for the buyers because they could get through a lot more and really narrow down. And, and like Jack just said, it's, it's the serious buyers and sellers that are out there now. And that's making for, you know, for easier transactions because the people that are out there are not just trying things they're there because right. you know they need to make a deal or they want to make a deal yeah so, so so that's interesting though i have to ask this then if you've got virtually someone looking at eight properties and they only want to go see two aside from someone just saying oh i don't like the color of that wall or you know what would be something that would make a, somebody virtually go oh i really want to go in and see that house what are the factors I mean, it's the same factors when you, when you go through any home. It's, it's the location, of course, because you can't change that. Um, a number of bedrooms, bathrooms, uh, condition and age of the property. Um, some of the ones we looked at were great inside. There was a, one was a condo townhouse complex, and the complex was very old. So, you know, that just didn't work for them. Right. Um, layout you, is always a big key, right? Yeah. yeah. And are, are you guys finding that your buyers can access everything they need to access online before they go out or is it generally i mean it's you know we're starting to see more sellers and their agents adopting all of this digital technology so that most new listings now have you know all the photos virtual tours virtual walkthroughs um they've been doing virtual open houses and walking through with their cameras so there's a lot more tech in place now that's allowing buyers to see more homes without having to physically go into them and then only narrowing it down to the to the best ones yeah. yeah, the first two weeks, I mean, there was that, everybody had to play catch up, right? Some realtors had never used some of the technology that they're using now and they had to adapt. Um, so it's definitely gotten easier for sure. Um, for your sellers now more than ever, you know, it really goes to show that you need a really assertive and proactive realtors in your corner because deals aren't just being, like they're not just happening. There's a lot of conversations going on behind the scenes now. Yeah because they're not in the house. So if your realtor is not there to pick up the phone and make the call or take the call, um, you know, those little things can, can make or break a deal right now when, when uh, people are hunting differently. 
Well, it's true too. I mean, I know like, for example, if I have a buyer who says, do not give me a galley kitchen, like I don't want a galley kitchen and I can't get a good access visual of the kitchen on the photos, because let's face it, when we take photos, often we don't want it to look like a galley kitchen. So mm -hmm. then you, we, we want to get on the, we used to just go show the place. And if we walked in and we didn't like the kitchen, we'd say, oh, well, you know, yeah. you know, whatever. Now we're like, nobody wants to, you know, waste a second or open a door that they don't need to open. So now we're getting on the phones. Hey, listen, this is what my client absolutely must have or absolutely doesn't want. How does your property fit? And then we'll decide. And I know as listing agents, we get those calls a lot. So um, when people do book into our listings, we're quite confident that this is a serious person. And we went through a phase there where there was barely any showings. We'd get a showing and it would come with an offer, right? Because there were so few people out looking, but the people out looking were so serious that if they looked, if they took the time to finally get in, they were probably making an offer. So it's not quite like that now, but definitely, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you find, do you think, uh, just out of curiosity, because you're all kind of working with different people too. I mean, Lauren, I know you're working with somebody looking downtown too. And do you find that your buyers downtown are nervous or they have a plan and they're okay with their plan? Um, I think people, um, initially, a lot of people were saying that they were going to sit on the sidelines. Um, as this is continuing to go on, I have more people coming back um, to the table wanting to take a closer look. Um, some of the things that uh, Jordan and Jack were saying, like floor plans have become really important. Mm -hmm. It's a, a must have in a condo because the layout can make such a big difference. Even things like the placement of the uh, the hot air fan and stuff like that, not close to the master bedroom, stuff that there's not usually pictures of. They want to know where all that is. Yeah. Because before we would just walk in, like you said, and see it and, and leave, no big deal. Um, it's just not worth it now. Yeah. To echo what Lauren just said about, um, you know, buyers kind of taking a break and now showing back up. Uh, just in this last two weeks, we've had a few of our buyers that same thing, you know, beginning of March or even the beginning of the year, um, you know, they weren't in a rush. There was some hesitancy. And now these last two weeks, I think we've had three new buyers that we've uh, connected to our mortgage brokers to really start the process because, there are still serious sellers out there. There's still new properties coming on the market. Yeah. Um, and some buyers will just wait and, and it gives opportunity to the rest of them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's interesting too, because the news is reporting CMHC has been talking about asking buyers to put 10% down, right? So if you were going to be a five, a 5% 5 first time home buyer, I mean, that would, that would motivate me to, if I was like, you know, him and ha and okay, if I don't have the extra capital, then, then yeah, I'm going to be shopping now at 5% down. They mm. actually feel there might be that little bit of a blip, those people sitting on the fence. I mean, here's the other thing. Um, typically, because I know there's some buyers sitting on the fence, like, well, you know, it's the elephant in the room. Oh, the prices might drop some more. You know, we're going to wait this out type thing. And, um, but when prices drop, typically we see interest rates go up. And this time, because it's so tied to the economy there is talk about uh interest rates eventually going back up so if we've got concern about interest rates going up eventually and the potential of needing the bigger down payment just to get in um maybe we will see that little surge in the next few weeks next few months of people just getting in because they haven't made the official announcement yet right on the five to ten they're just making noise right yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's just noise at this point, yeah. you know, but you're right. Like if it took you an extra two or three years to save up that extra 5% or longer because of this economy, by then, who knows where the interest rates are? Nobody knows, right? So, yeah. And it's yeah. Uh, just if I can add it, it was a really, it's a, so that's president of the CMHC made that announcement in the House of Commons. And the big part of his speech was the reason why they really wanted to stretch that 5% to 10% is because they're finding that today, a lot of those first time buyers that use that 5% are, are way too over leveraged. And um, it's almost like a, a safety plea in order to, to more like uh, protect the future first time buyers that, that do go with that 5% or 10% to make sure that if there is a correction, it's not wiping out their equity right away, right? Oh, yeah. You'd be underwater right away, right? Potentially. Yeah. And CMHC is a government, uh, it's taxpayers money so mm -hmm. 
you know, we want to make sure it's somewhat secure. There's they don't want to be taking over the mortgages. No, no, not today. Um, okay. Here's a good question. And again, I know all of you really on the team work with investors or one way or another, but Jack, we'll start with you. If I was an investor sitting on the sideline today, like some of them are, what, what might you be telling me? I've got some money. I've, I've been pre-qualified. I was all ready to do it three months ago. What might you be telling me today? So we're dealing with a buyer investor specifically here. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, first thing I would want to know is what are you trying to accomplish? What, what, what's your goal? Are you looking for something that's going to cash flow and, and how much money do you need uh, it to cash flow? How much can you put okay. down and, and what's your risk tolerance, you know, because these are uncertain times and depending on what you're trying to do there, it may be risky if you're looking for, you know, steady cash flow from a renter for say, like per se. So, um, those are big questions to get first and foremost, and you said you're pre-approved, you've got a pre-approved yeah. in place. So what if I didn't need cash flow, but I just didn't want to lose money? What, what might you say? What would be an idea? Oh boy. Crystal ball time or what? Like a guaranteed investment strategy? Well, we, we can't guarantee anything is real. <laughs> exactly. But, but I think it's safe. We have, we've yet to see, I think, a, a long-term investment go really bad. And that's just I mean, it. But if you're looking to flip something, I would say that now's definitely not the time. And, and uh, you, it'd be hard to justify something like that unless you got something for an incredible price. But at the end of the day, yeah. I mean, the only thing I would suggest is going long-term 10 years plus. Just plan know, for that, right? Hold it in. Yeah. Hold it you know, hold it as long as you can and make sure that you, you have money aside uh, in order to hold it if yeah. you can't rent it or if your renters aren't paying for sure. So a lot of planning, definitely a lot of planning. Lauren, what are you seeing um, from your builders and investors now? Are they, are they just sitting and holding or are they, what do you think you're going to see in the next year? Um, I think a lot of them are going to start uh, chomping at the bit a little bit because everybody only wants to be on hold for so long and then they want to make a move and it might not be that the buyers and sellers line up right away but um some of the things we did we were doing in the past is we were um, selling properties and then the owners were staying on as a renter right. i think that could be a safe bet for investors today with almost a built-in tenant especially if we structured the deal where all of the rent money was either coming off the price or something so there was no risk to either side about you know having yeah. to pay rent in the meantime. So, I mean, certainly people are calling asking about what opportunities we can tell them about. And then we're passing that on to our potential sellers trying to, you know, put people together. Yeah. Well, you know what, I've been pretty blown away by our luxury home prices. I like mostly I'm talking about Willowdale West, um, West Lansing, Bayview Village, uh, Armour Heights. I was looking at Bayview York Mills. So areas where we're not seeing a lot of sales, We've seen a lot of speculation, and yet I saw something in Bayview York Mills go over eight million. We saw a new home on Elmhurst get almost three million, woohoo! Yeah. Which I think is the highest sale price in that pocket mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. Weirdest yeah. time, highest price. So, yeah, yeah. two million nine hundred fifty thousand, and then there was another one just west of there on a fifty footer in Willowdale West that sold for a little over two point eight million, almost two nine actually. So I, yeah, I there's know. a lot of construction. Um, everything's started up again. Um, I live in the area and walking around, um, all the construction sites are busy bees. And I don't think any of the builders should be, uh, overly panicked per se, because like you said, the new homes, um, are still seeing great prices. Yeah. When they're priced right. When they're priced right. Wow. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. I just want to just check if we're getting any questions now. I have two people have sent me one emailed me and then one somebody just asked me a question now. Where do we see prices going in the next three months? In wow. Toronto, <laughs> detached homes. Wow, well, I guess, yeah. Looking at the trajectory alone, I mean, and what we're seeing in the news isn't exactly inspiring. 
a whole lot of confidence, but you, there are some positives, right? Like for instance, there may be motivation from your, from your mm -hmm. first time buyers that want to sneak in in case they do move that uh, rate from 5% down to 10% down. Um, but overall big picture stuff, I mean, I can't imagine it's going to be getting too much better. Uh, there's a lot of forecasts out there. A lot of economists are saying, depending on what you're reading at the end of the year in Canada prices, they're saying like 15%, some are saying 18, some are saying 20, but at the end of the day, they're all speaking double digits. So, 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 but here, here's something, and you know, we'll have to figure this out for next week. Um, we've already felt a drop though. So I'm always, ex when, when they say there's a drop for the year, I'm always like, okay, where are we already? So I almost wonder if, if things kind of didn't change much from here on in, we'd probably be feeling that drop that 10 percent i don't know how much more i don't know anyway that's the thing right i mean we know that they're not skyrocketing they're not going up but we are seeing oh condos went up in agent court north mm -hmm. right did you see there you that, yeah. so right. I saw that a couple of scarborough neighborhoods were the only neighborhoods in the city of toronto where condo prices actually went increased over last year so you see. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> the trends right. change. Yeah, yeah. Plus thirty-four thousand five hundred dollars. They're up on average. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. yeah. In terms of a three-month uh, trajectory, it's really like, almost impossible to guess what prices are going to be like. But in terms of right now, does it feel like we're in a downtrend? Yeah, but we don't really know in terms of what degree, and the floor is not falling. And but uh, we do know right now the prices are impressively stable i think we're all we can all agree that it's pretty incredible how prices are holding and um with the lack of inventory so in terms of from a seller's perspective knowing knowing what you know now and knowing all the stuff you don't know in the future it, it's it's a pretty promising time stable we now might be the spring market everyone wanted you know and 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 if we don't see that flood of inventory in the next few weeks we should see those pr prices stay stable i think if we see that big dumping of inventory if suddenly everybody says i want to sell my house that that wouldn't be so great buyers would like it yeah if you to choose from if you to choose i mean from. a lot of people have those mortgage deferrals for six months so in the next three months i mean for the most part people are propped up Anybody that's yeah. taken advantage of it, they're kind of protected or sheltered a little bit for now, right? Yeah, yeah. We just um, had a Sorry, go on, Jack. I'm sorry. I, I just, Molly sent us a question here in regards to um, home staging and what oh. do we to happen with home staging in the, in, uh, in the real estate world going forward? Well, well, hi, Molly. Good to see you here. Um, uh, we're seeing a combination, right, guys? So we're still seeing staging going on where stagers are steaming their stuff, cleaning them, leaving them empty on in boxes and so on prior to putting them in homes. But we are also seeing a lot of the virtual staging as well, right? And uh, we'll talk about that in a second. And then the other thing I'm seeing personally is I'm seeing a little more of, uh, you know, the real video where people are kind of being a little more real, the home is clean and so on, but it's not staged, staged, staged up. So it'll be interesting. So now the question goes back to you guys, because you guys on the team are actually the ones out with the buyers more showing. What are the buyers saying when they're seeing homes empty or unstaged or staged? What do you think? I think personally, the majority of homes I've showed since this, uh, since COVID has, have been vacant. I haven't walked into one home yet. But uh, that's been vacant. And the, I would say that arguably a lot of them are vacant just in terms of safety and, and buyers are more comfortable with it, especially when this was really um, like really in its uh, peak. It, it seemed that like the only homes that were really uh, being viewed and, and yeah, and stuff were, were vacant. But uh, Jack, where, where, have you been in a house that people were actually living in recently? Uh, yeah, there's been a couple that come to mind, but basically like when it comes to there's not a big like a huge fuss like if we go into a house that's that's completely vacant and it's not staged they're kind of maybe a little relieved it seems because they're like okay like chances are no one's living here right now and and i think they feel maybe a little more confident in it plus 
a lot of listings have virtual staging right now. So they look at those and they can kind of get a sense of what they might want to do with the space. Um, yeah. Which have become pretty incredible. Staging. Like these virtual staging. Is They're good. I, I still think, you know, to st buyers still pay more for stage properties than not. Mm -hmm. yeah. so I don't think the, <clears throat> the demand of stagers or staging will go away. I think today though, if you're thinking, should I stage or not stage in order to sell, I would definitely have the conversation with us first because not every property is the same too. And in some areas we're saying don't do it in other areas, it might be a little more important. Yeah. Um, I also think what's really important always before now after is um, decluttering and cleaning. Yeah clean really really clean people still yeah. want to be able to see clean and and the pictures we always told um our clients not to worry the pictures don't show the dust bunnies they don't show this but now that we're going in with our cameras and we're doing the close-ups more stuff will show yeah and you know that's an interesting point too because we've walked through homes that have not but you know we've taken buyers in homes that are not renovated you know old grandma's green carpet you know, scratch and sniff velvet wallpaper, it's clean as a bug's ear mm -hmm. and the buyers pick up on it mm -hmm. and they walk through and they'll be like, I love how clean it is. It how feels pristine. good. I love that you just said clean as a bug's ear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely use that one. That was my mother-in-law's famous one. Yeah, it was actually, I think it was cute as a bug's ear, sorry. Okay, so. For just one thing, just for the, the buyers that I've been working with lately. Yeah. Um, I don't think much has changed in terms of the perception of staging, in terms of, you know, a staged home versus a non-staged home just feels better when they're looking at it, whether it's online or physically. Um, they just get a better idea, right, of where everything would go, how it would be set up. But really the biggest thing, like Lauren touched on, is decluttering, depersonalizing, um, you know, maybe rearranging some of the pieces that you have so it flows better that right off the bat makes the biggest difference. It, okay. It's true. We're, we, the reality is though, in the last few months though, we have our own clients have, we have done a little less staging we, than we would have. Yes. Um, and we have assisted the more, like you say, in the decluttering. How can we declutter and help you get a little organized? Cause we're not going to add so many of the fancy things, but we'll make sure it looks clean and organized. And, and I would tell you our sellers so appreciate that because they actually don't want to bring in other, they've never liked it when we bring in other stuff. Like they do it, everybody does it, but everybody would prefer to just have their own stuff, I think, I don't know. But. I think the key from the buyer's perspective is, is again, like Lauren said, just being kind of clean and clutter free and not feeling, you know, dirty, first of all, or, you know, claustrophobic because there's just so much stuff you know, falling at you from every corner. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really what makes the difference. And a lot of the time, that's all it needs a house is just yeah. to declutter, depersonalize and kind of rearrange a few of your, your current pieces of furniture. So, so on that note, I would say, just going back to Molly's question too, and, and what we're all saying is right now, this is the way it is. If we see that inventory pick up, I gotta tell you, sellers will need to pull out every stop again, right? We'll go back to the full on staging, like whatever it is we can do to get a buyer to walk in that door and choose us because it's, it's, you know, it's, it takes on a very different thing then then that's what will happen. But I think right now what we're feeling is a little less of that, but I think we'll come back to it if this market gets tougher, mm -hmm. if it becomes more of a buyer's market, the sellers will do whatever it takes. They'll put on that fancy dress, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, any other questions? Now, Jordan, I think we have a guest next week, correct? Yes, so we are bringing in a, uh, a longtime paralegal to discuss landlord and tenant issues. Um, you know, with everything that's been going on the last few months, you know, tenants threatening not to pay rent, landlords threatening to kick people out, uh, landlord tenant board being closed for evictions, there's just been a lot of misinformation going on. Whether you're a tenant that has questions or a landlord that has questions or an investor thinking of buying a rental property. Um, so just really good information and content on what to do if you're a landlord, if you're a tenant, what to do if you can't afford to pay rent, what to do if your tenants don't pay rent. Uh, all of that uh, re really, really good information and very relevant right now. Uh, so we'll be, uh, we'll be bringing them on uh, to help all of our clients with their questions on, on rentals. That's great. That's great. So, um, 
And those are for you, like you say, even if you're starting to think about investing, uh, just asking some basic questions about the landlord tenancy. So, you know, going in eyes wide open, what it all looks like, right? Excellent. Well, we'll look forward to seeing everybody back next week. We are again, the Mahal and Ross group and we're at Real Talk Live. And we are at realestatetoronto.com. So please follow us, call us if you have any other questions and we'll see you next week.